Welcome to Italy and the Adriatic coast. Behind me is Venice, 200 kilometers away. Across the sea is Croatia's Dalmatian coast. And inland, the rolling hills of Tuscany, and just a little closer, the Misano circuit, home for round three of W Series. And today marks the halfway point of a season that's seen no shortage of drama. Welcome to W Series. Hockenheim, what a place to start. Lights out, it's a brilliant stop. Megan Gill, he worn down the inside. See you in Zolder. There's an issue with that car. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was close. A brilliant battle here. Going to be a new winner in the W Series. Mike Gavita takes the win. Two races, two winners. Doris and Mazzano. The third round and the third country visited by W Series and by far the hottest so far after a chilly Hockenheim and Zolder. We've had two different winners in those races as well, but thanks to a first and second place, it's Jamie Chadwick who is at the top of the table. With a six-point advantage over Bites Gavisser, the winner from Zolder, Alice Powell, has been on the podium in both of those two races. She sits in third. Marta Gasquia, the Spanish teenager, is in fourth. And Britain's Sarah Moore is in fifth. We also have eight nationalities in the top ten. Let's hand over to our commentary team, Alan McNish and Claire Cottingham. Only half a job done so far for Fabian Volvent, who starts on pole position, looking for her first podium. But championship leader Jamie Chadwick, who was just a whisker's length away from Volvent's time in quali, lines up second. The Zolder winner, Beitzka Visser, starts from third. Alongside her, looking to grab another podium position, finishes Alice Powell. Well, fifth is home favourite Vicky Piria and Japan's Miki Koyama, who was fastest in second practice. She starts sixth. The Spaniard Marta Garcia and the Brit Sarah Moore, they line up seventh and eighth. South African Tasman Pepper on the fifth row alongside Vivian Kessley. Despite showing pace in quality, Gosha Rodez starts outside the top ten alongside Sarah Bovey in twelfth. After a five place grid penalty, Esme Hawkey starts thirteenth alongside her is Naomi Schiff. Cook is fifteenth, Gilt sixteenth, and then it's Hawkins and Holbrook. Seventeen and eighteenth with Caitlin Wood rounding up the 19 drivers that's after breaking her suspension during qualifying well alan it's going to be a completely different circuit isn't for this, these drivers to try and get their head around very different from zolder and very different from hockenheim as well yes it is uh, we saw the track temperature 50 degrees celsius but also there's some long fast corners that put a lot of energy into the tires but some big braking areas as well which allows for overtaking i think it's going to be extremely tough for the car the tires and the drivers round here in what is going to be a, a hot race from in terms of the actual racing, but at the same time in terms of the track itself. Well, like we said, the track is 50. That is, that's very warm for these tyres to hold on for a whole 30 minutes plus one lap, isn't it? It certainly is, and there's a little bit of different tyre strategy as well with uh, the first three, Fabian Volvend, Jamie Chadwick and Beitzke Visser on new tyres, uh, whereas uh, the next section of the top ten are actually on used, and so therefore I hope for Volvend's point of view that allows her to get a good traction off the line into the first corner, but Chadwick, she said in pre-race she needed to get that done as they go into turn one. Fabian Volvend is lining up in pole position. There is the championship leader, Jamie Chadwick. Can she make it work? Into turn one, into turn two, into turn three. Those tricky corners at the beginning of this circuit. The lights will go out very quickly here, so make sure you keep your eyes on the gantry as the engines start to rumble and we get this race underway. Look out for the green flag at the back. It'll be waved very shortly. Can Fabian Volven become another winner in this series? The green flag is flying at the back. The engines are rolling, the lights are one, two, three, four, and they're out. And Fabian Volven has a great start off the line, but Jamie Chadwick is coming in fast. 
Wait for what we see at the back. There's a couple of slow uh, at the back there as Jamie Chadwick has taken the lead into turn one and there's a huge crash there for one of the cars. We'll come back to that in just a moment, but it is Jamie Chadwick who is leading. I think that might have been Fabian Volvend as Bikes Gavissa is in second place. Was that Alan? Fabian Volven that's in the gravel. It's Alice Powell's who's in the gravel. Alice Powell, who started in fourth, will look like she's not going to take part in this race anymore. No, Chadwick got a very good launch off the line, but initially it was Volven that got the power down well, but then Chadwick accelerated off. There we see Alice Powell, who's now outside, and three doesn't go into one, and Powell was the one that actually took the hit. The car went up onto two wheels, but landed back down, broken front suspension. Frustration for Alice Powell, because she was looking for a good race. Safety car is out. Alice Powell will be disappointed with that start. And like you said, I don't think I've seen a car flying completely no, off the it track was, like that. Yeah, it just is. Uh, they got interlocked wheels there as Powell's fine. There's no problem at all. She leaps over the barrier as you see the safety car coming out and the cars will line up behind them. But certainly for Volven, not the start she wanted because she was looking to try to make it into first corner first. And it was actually Jamie Chadwick that got the electric acceleration on the inside got to that first place, but now her advantage will be taken away. Here's the restart. Here's show the start again. Here's the restart. So great. Actually, it was Fabian Volven who just got a little bit of oversteer then. Jamie Chadwick just made her way around the outside and into turn one and gets a lead quite quickly as Bikes Gavissa uh, gets past Volvend and it's Volvend and Powell who come together and then Powell just, like you said, you can't you can't stop that basically can you no she was on the outside you're always in the risk area and she was seeing a gap that was uh, forever closing at that moment in time and it closed a little bit quicker than she expected that launched her up into there here you see her on the right hand side of her picture and uh, there was just that little bit of a squeeze on Volvent. at the end of the day Volvent didn't get the launch off the line that she expected Powell did get a bit of a launch and was looking to take advantage of it however that wasn't possible broken left front suspension and a disappointing end to the race. However, it's Chadwick that's leading from Visser, and then the slow-starting Volvend is in third. Safety car out then here. That is a quite a terrifying accident, actually. I'm sure if you're a driver and you're watching your car, you, you would know that you've got four wheels off. However, that could look like it's going to start doing a barrel roll. Yeah, but it's more frustration when you're inside because you know that's the race over and the points are slipping away from you in that position. So it's nothing more than that. You know, these cars are extremely safe and uh, this particular incident was uh, something that happens. And the cars are designed to take it as well. So it's a 30 minute race plus one lap. Uh, so the safety car will uh, start cutting down into that time. So it's Jamie Chadwick who leads at the moment from Bites Gavissa, uh, from Fabian Volven, from Vicky Piri, um, who is the home favourite round here from Mickey Koyama, who's made it up from sixth to fifth to Marta Garcia. Tasman Pepper, Sarah Moore is in eighth, uh, Vivian Kessley in ninth, and tenth is Sabra Cook. And then rounding up the top 15 is Shift Bovey, Hawkey and Hawkins, and Redest in 15th, and then Caitlin Wood, Holbrook and Gilks round up the 18 now drivers with Alice Powell looking so frustrated. We're still running behind the safety car here at Mizano after a spectacular crash at turn one for Alice Powell. Jamie Chadwick leads. Welcome back to Mizano in Italy for round three of W Series. The race is running behind the safety car after Alice Powell's race came to a dramatic end at turn one. Whilst the field follow the safety car, let's find out more about the W Series car from Sabre Cook. Hey guys, my name is Sabre Cook. I am a USA driver in the W Series and I'm going to show you around our Tatus 318 F3 car. So we'll start with the front of the car. The front suspension is a standard pushrod suspension. You see all the time on modern formula cars. So these are obviously the springs, dampers, rocker arms. These are linear pots that track the suspension travel throughout the race while the car is on track. Um, you have the front wing. We don't have any gurneys that are adjustable on the front wing, but we do have these two flaps that we're allowed to change. This is my office. 
And so here's um, the halo. The only bad thing about it is it's quite heavy, so it obviously raises our center of gravity, which isn't always optimal for, for car setup. And we'll go to the back of the car now. So what we have is the Alfa Romeo 1.8 liter, four cylinder, single turbo engine in the back. Here's the air intake. It pushes, it forces the air into the, into the engine, keeps it cooling, really helps it get the, the right kind of ignition and, and pressure for combustion. And then down here you have the stator is hidden under there. The starter is here. Standard push rod suspension in the back, just like the front. And then on the other side, You've got um, our single turbo is hidden under the heat shield right here. And then we've obviously got, you see the massive floor tray and the tunnels that come out from under the car and our nice rear wing. So with that pressure difference, it sucks the car to the ground. It's called the Venturi effect. And that gives us the amount of downforce that basically helps us optimize the grip levels when we're on track. All right guys, that's our Tatus 318 F3 car. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if we just remind ourselves where we are in terms of the calendar, we have some cracking tracks still to come. After this one, we head to the streets of Norris Ring, where there's always plenty of wacky races, whatever the series. Assen in the Netherlands hosts the penultimate round, and the finale is at Brands Hatch in August. Racing to get underway very shortly here. Jamie Chappell will start backing up the drivers here as she comes round the final turn. Now she's going to start pulling away, and she will start pulling away from Bicycle Visit, and it's go. Green lights are out. Jamie Chadwick carries on this race and takes the lead from Fabian Volven. So it's Jamie Chadwick, Bicycle Visit, Fabian Volven. Green flag is out, and she pushes down hard into turn one, and it's a tricky turn here. Turn one, turn two, turn three, as Bicycle Visit looks to see if she can find some time. She's actually starting to drop off a little bit now, and Fabian Volven it's starting to put the pressure on Bikeskavissa. Yeah, it was a very good start by Jamie Chadwick. She pulled back and then got a gap two corners from the end. She knew that the pace car was into the pit lane and then she just gunned it. She needed to do that because the risk point on a restart like this is into the first corner and also into the next corner she's going to get to turn eight. Those are the big braking areas, but she's got about a second gap at this moment over Visser and then Volvend right behind pulling out the times already. She has set a fastest first sector, so she is keen to make sure that she keeps the lead at this championship because it is tightening up now between Bites Gavissa and Jamie Chadwick. There is only six points. So if one of them hasn't got a, doesn't get in any of the top 10 for points or doesn't finish this race, then the championship could completely swing. Well, swing, there's a lot of action still to go, I'm pretty sure, and this is the top three are definitely pulling away. Now, these are the three drivers that were able to save a set of new tires for this race. Right behind, you've got to see Koyama looking down. Piria's inside as they come down there. Now, we know Koyama can definitely overtake it. She's looking to try to make hay right at the beginning of this race. Well, she's not going to do it around there, because if she lets two too much time go. She's going to have uh, Marta Garcia all on her gearbox, so she's going to have to be quite clever if she wants to try and find a way around Vicky Piria. And Vicky Piria, who is the home favourite, is going to have no interest as Fabian Volden has really closed that gap now with Bites Gavissa. Bites Gavissa, who knows this circuit. However, Fabian Volven has won around here last year in the Ferrari Challenge. So she's got silverware around here already as she's starting to close that gap. Yeah, she is. She's uh, just obviously quicker than Visser at this moment in time. It's trying to find a way past because, as we can see, for Chadwick, she's not pulled too far away. It's only half a second. However, it's enough where she can take a little bit of a breath because the actual scrap behind is allowing her just to concentrate and trying to pull away at the front. But for Volven, she doesn't want that gap to extend. And I think Volven's actually looking for a little lunch down the inside into turn eight. She has a sniff at it, but decides not to do it at this moment in time. Behind Piria has pulled away a little bit from Koyama, though. Coming into turn eight now, so when can they do it? It's the nine and then the tight ten uh, right-hander coming up next. She, is she going to be brave enough to be able to make it work in a... In a I in think, that sort of, uh, where's she going to do it? Well, I would say she's got to try to hustle and just push Visser into making a mistake, try to compromise her line, leaving a corner. Now we're coming down to the very fast triple right-hander. Not really many overtaking opportunities into these ones, but there is into the last couple of corners. If you can line someone up, and definitely Volvend is on the gearbox of Visser. I don't think she's quite close enough to be able to get it done, but she's lining up, putting the pressure on. That's the thing she's got to do, continue to put the pressure on. Remember, Volvend is frustrated as well. She was on pole position. She should be leading this race, and at the moment, she's down in third. 
Well, Fabian Volven has set the second fastest sector, so she's really starting to put this pressure on Vita Kavitsa. She goes over the bumps a bit there. Amy Dargan is in the pit lane for us this weekend. Amy, you've got an update on Alice Powell. Yeah, understandably, extremely, extremely frustrated. Um, and she's actually just walked all the way down pit lane and headed directly back to W Series HQ. So we couldn't grab a word with her just to find out if she was actually okay. But I did actually catch up with her after qualifying. She'd already ruled herself out of a podium today. She said she didn't feel she had the pace. She still had some of that vibration issue she had yesterday. But it was, I mean, this is not the way she would, she would have wanted to end today, especially for where she is in the championship standings. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Jessica Hawkins will get a time penalty of five seconds for a jump start. She was reported and investigated, so wait till we see that happen as well. It will probably be added, I assume, to the end of the race as this battle continues between Chadwick, Visser and Volvend. Interesting here, Alan, that they don't have track limits. They only have track limits at certain parts of this circuit, don't they? Yeah, and that allows maybe a little bit more latitude in the drivers in terms of overtaking and what they can maybe do, squeezing the other one to try to get a gap and to create a gap. And certainly uh, they're going to do that. Kesley is right behind Cook now, coming down into the three fast right-handers as we see four, fifth, six, seventh, and eighth coming through. And then this battle we're looking at, um, oh, and she's looking at it, and that's a brave maneuver. However, Cook still goes round the outside and says, nope, you're going to have to wait, or you're going to have to fight a little bit more for it. Trying to lunge in the inside, not going to work for Vivian Kessley, who, lest us forget, wasn't there for Hockenheim, so this is only her second race, and she was out of Zolder as well. So this is her first time actually racing out there. So the lead, Jamie Chadwick takes the lead from Fabian Volvent, who started on pole position. The top three are still in this battle for the podium positions. Vitska Visser second at the moment. Third was pole position person Fabian Volvent. Fourth is Vicky Piria. And uh, sixth is Marta Garcia, as watching Garcia Redest in a battle with Sarah Bovey and Jessica Hawkins. And Hawkins overtaking there. She's got that penalty coming up the five seconds for the jump start. She'll be massively frustrated because she was quick in free practice in the top three uh, pretty much all the time. But uh, ultimately, with a bit of a struggling qualifying, qualified right down the grid, making her way back through, showing that she's got the pace, but down in 13th right now. Five laps completed here at Mizano, and we have a close battle at the front between Jamie Chadwick, Beinske Visser, and Fabian Volvend. We're on lap six in W Series, round three here at Mizano, and it's tight at the top. Vaiskevitz are now starting to put the pressure on Jamie Chadwick, seeing if she can go around the inside there uh, into the third sector of this. And she's looking at, like, the temperature's starting to come into the tyres now, isn't she? Yeah, Chadwick's just made oh, a little mistake there, though, as she's run a little bit wide at the hairpin. That's allowed Visser to get closer. She can't overtake into the final corner, but she's just putting the pressure on Chadwick right now. This is at the point exactly as you said, where tyres are up to temperature and they're starting to be lose a little bit of grip. So let's see if she can do it into turn one, turn two. She's not going to do it on the straight. Is she going to do it into turn one? She takes a look. She isn't going to do it. Not brave enough. And actually, that pushes her back a bit and sees Fabian Volvin start to come and put the pressure back on Vitska Visser. Well, that's the thing is, Visser can't be too aggressive. She has got to have a little bit of an eye on Volven behind because Volven's in this situation where she can watch this uh, fight and if there is an opportunity because of Visser trying to overtake Chadwick that Visser doesn't get done, Volvend will be there to pick up the pieces. I think this battle's going to go on for a while, isn't it, Alan? Uh, I think it's going to go on for 19 minutes plus one lap until the checkered <laughs> flag falls. Certainly hope so because it is a really strong battle in the championship as well as in this particular race. But right now, Chadwick's just again got a little bit of a breathing space, but I think the two drivers behind Visser and Volvend are a little bit quicker as Visser makes a small mistake breaking into to turn number eight onto the back straight now. But I think she's got the power down, so Volven's going to have to wait a little bit more before she can have an attack. Well, the incident between Alice Powell, who is out of this race, and Fabian Volven will be investigated uh, after this race. Well, might see something come through. It depends if the stewards decide on it before the end of the race. 
with 18 minutes left on the clock. Is that something the stewards would think about right now? Well, they'll look at it, but unless it's a slam dunk, as we say, and it was definitely someone's fault, then uh, I think it'll be investigated after the race when they hear from all drivers. However, saying that, personally, I think it was a racing incident, and I think it'll be eventually put down to that. However, one thing, it was an incident that launched uh, driver up into the air, and that could have done some damage to Volven. That's one thing that, uh, you know, we'll know a little bit later on in the race, whether there has been any damage whatsoever to Volven's car. Right now, I'd suggest not by her pace and the fact she's hassling Visser in second. 17 and a half minutes left of this race is this battle for the first, the second and third, the 25 points that they all seem to want, the win in W Series, which Jamie Chadwick's already got, Weitzke Visser hasn't got yet. Uh, no further action between uh, Fabian Volvend and Alice Powell, so they decided that quite quickly. Yes, they did. I think they looked at it and thought, yep, racing incident. You know, it's the first corner, and so therefore everybody is trying to make up positions and in circumstances. Alice Powell went for a gap. It wasn't quite there in the end, but uh, it wasn't necessarily anybody's particular fault. As, uh, how much pressure is Jamie Chadwick going to be under here? Well, because Vice Gavissa, I just saw, made a mistake into that corner. It wasn't that she was trying to make a move or anything on Jamie Chadwick then, but she took a completely different racing line. Yeah, I'm not sure it was a mistake, actually. She's okay. done it now in the last couple of laps. The first time I looked at it, but this time I think it's more a case of she's actually trying to take a different line to break. She's looking to get some air on her front wing, which will mean that she's got less chance of locking up the brakes. Quite clever thinking, actually, there by Visser. However, it does compromise her entry a little bit. She's much better at in the hairpin than Jamie Chadwick. Chadwick struggles to get into that hairpin. That allows Visser to cut the corner and get close behind her coming through the last couple of corners again. And it also gives a little bit of confidence to Visser. She knows that that's consistently the case. However, Chadwick gets out of the final corner very, very well each time. And that gives her a breathing space. Whichever way, this is ebbing and flowing with different speeds around the circuit, different places where each driver is quick and each driver is struggling. Nikki Koyama still putting the pressure then on Vicky Piria, still not able to get round and see if she can move herself up from sixth to fourth as this battle at the front still continues. Jamie Chadwick is putting some good laps in, I would say, actually some clean laps as well. I saw her in practice and things like that. She was saying, actually, I didn't have the cleanest lap. I wasn't sure about my qualifying, but now in the race, I'm going to put the pressure on. I'm going to make sure that I win this. And she was fast off the line, which actually in Hockenheim and Zolder, we didn't see. We saw a poor start from her and Zolder and not the best in Hockenheim. However, this one, she was in second place as we see uh, Mickey Koyama there. Poor foot going round the outside of the track to take up fourth place there. That is a brave move. Yeah, I think Piria actually had a bit of a trouble coming out of turn number six. She, out the left hander up the hill, she struggled to get the power down, sorry, out of eight, and she struggled to get the power down, and that allowed Koyama just to run round the outside, and uh, now Koyama is up, but it looks like Piria's back up to speed again and looking to try and get that position back. It's important when you drop a position to try and attack back straight away to take the element of surprise, but now Koyama's been released least and uh, she's up into fourth place here we see a replay again let's see the replay then so Koyama seems to get the speed out of that corner and Piria seems to not have anything she almost looks sluggish and it's not really that brave actually because it's around the outside but Piria seems to have completely lost most of her speed going yeah, into that. I think she struggled there there was something as she got off uh, out of line and didn't get the power down but that like I said that's a release Koyama now into a position and she can now just see the gap which is 3.7 seconds between herself and Volve end in third. This particular battle we are looking at right now. Halfway through the race, and it's still a close battle for the lead between Chadwick, Visser, and Volve end. Welcome back to Misano in Italy for round three of W Series. The leaders are just completing their 10th lap and our top three have pulled out a small gap to the chasers. Let's rejoin our commentary team, Alan McNish and Claire Cottingham. 13 minutes left then, it's Jamie Chadwick who leads from Beitzgevissa. Fabian Volvend is in third with Miki Koyama moving her way up to fourth from sixth. Vicky Piri moved down to fifth after that move with Koyama at Marta Garcia, who has been on the podium this season, is sixth. Tasman Pepper in seventh. Eighth is Sarah Moore, and ninth 
is Sabra Cook. Vivian Kessley having a good race there, considering Vivian Kessley has not actually raced in these cars before. Yes, she has a very strong race at the moment. Uh, it's looking as if she's getting used to it very quickly. But uh, Chadwick has just done the fastest lap of the race so far, just pulled another couple of tenths away from Visser. She's a lot, given herself a little bit more breathing space. The other person that's done her personal fastest lap so far is Koi Yama, who is uh, just holding on to the back and pulling away from Piria. So she's holding on to this particular gap as they're dragging away from fifth place Piria right now. Why is it that we're seeing Bikes Vista start to really close the gap up to turn 10 here of the hairpin down into that third sector? Why is she getting so much time on Jamie Chadwick here? Well, I think Chadwick struggles on a couple of corners, and that's car balance related. It's just where that uh, she's able to be quick and uh, where she's able to well, where she's struggling a little bit more than Visser. And that's how they set up the car. It's also the driver feel. And it's this particular corner they come up to now, which is where Visser is very, very good. She can cut the curve a little bit more, get the power down a little bit more, and she locks onto the back of the gearbox. Uh, up through here as well, she's looking very good. But this final corner, Chadwick, is able to get the power down. Visser, in the aerodynamic slipstream, just can't get the front of the car in. So she can't carry that momentum down as well into turn one, which is an overtaking opportunity. So it's a little bit frustrating for Visser because she's quick in the areas of the track where it's not easy to overtake. For Chadwick, that gives her a bit of breathing space, but not enough to be comfortable because in that last lap, the gap has actually came down to three tenths of a second between the leader Chadwick and second place Visser. Sarah Moore looking like she's slightly struggling a bit there as a Sabra Cook is starting to close the gap. Sarah Moore having a, a harder weekend than I think she's had uh, in the whole of W Series. Uh, saying coming into the race that she really wanted to do better than fifth. And even when she was racing in the GTs last weekend in the, uh, at Donington in the UK race, she finished fifth and she said, I really don't want to be fifth again. However, it seems to have not worked out. Something hasn't been set up this weekend how she likes it. Yeah, it's not ideal. And she's uh, probably just holding this group up behind them who are slowly catching all the way through from Moore to Cook to Kesley to Schiff to Hockey. are uh, all that little bit quicker right now than Moore. So in that respect, they're going to just uh, have to watch it. She's putting her hand up in there, Cook, you see. That's just to get a little bit of air into her hand to cool things down. I'm not really sure why you would do that in such a short race but it just seems to be that she had her hand up in there a little bit that's what i do when i want you to stop talking yes well maybe she's speaking to her engineer she stop might talking. be she might be doing that or she might just be trying to get a little bit of airflow into the car remember it is very hot out there at the moment that's what i do as well that's airflow every time i do that to you so jamie chadwick still leads 10 minutes left on the clock can bites give this to make it work again in this third sector she started to really close in the gap on uh, jamie chadwick but jamie chadwick's just fast off the throttle here and able to get into turn one and keep the lead of this race. And it was an electric start from Jamie Chadwick. Textbook, some might say. Yes, it was, uh, but it was also made uh, much better by the fact Volven didn't get off the line at all. And so she had a clean run through into that first corner. Uh, but in the last lap, it was Volven that put in the fastest lap so far and also the final middle sector. So it's again, they're just eking away a little bit. But uh, at the same time, it would say that it's not Jamie Chadwick. This is the quickest car on track. So let's head down to the pit lanes. Uh, Amy Dargan, you've got uh, a little bit of news on Sabre Cook. I have indeed. I just think we should really kind of point out what a fantastic effort from her it's been today. 15th to 9th at the moment. This will be her first points since the W Series started. And really, her comments so far have been she's trying to get used to the European way of racing. It's, it's just completely different out in the US. Um, and also, she's often t obviously, every time we come to a new, uh, different circuit, she's having to learn the circuit from FP1 onwards. So actually, a great effort from her today. That's a very good point, Amy. Lots of these drivers have never been round these circuits. We mentioned Bikes Kavis has been round here, but we must say Jamie Chadwick has not been round here before, so she hadn't been here before practice sessions. Fabian Goldman's weren't one round here. However, lots of these drivers, it's a new track for them. Yeah, and talking about Saber Cook, the tracks in the US are very, very different. They're very narrow, very, I would say, risky. Here you've got the massive runoff areas that they take much more liberty at, and that's something that you have to get used to. As Visser now oh, is putting v the pressure on to Chadwick coming down into the first corner. Got a real run, and it looks like Visser is needing to try to get past right now. She's just sticking her nose in, making sure that Chadwick stays very, very honest. Two tenths of a second to gap. In turn one, she definitely had a look to see if she could find a gap, but then pulled away a little bit. So maybe came off and decided that wasn't exactly the right place to do it. However, I think maybe into turn one, too, that could be a good sort of place you could get to the cutback. 
So with just seven and a half minutes plus one lap to go in round three of W Series, the battle for the win between Jamie Chadwick and Bytesca Visser is very much on. Four team laps completed in round three of W Series, and it's a battle for victory between the winners of round one and two. This has really started to put the pressure into turn one again, but Jamie Chadwick's having none of it. She's defending hard, but her tyres are going to start going on her at this point. We're going to see uh, Bites Gavis's tyres really starting to go, as well as Jamie Chadwick, who has to defend. Now, is it the tyres that go most when you're defending or when you're trying to make a move? It's, uh, it's more a case of car balance and what you're getting the power down and things like that, wheel spinning, and uh, that just puts more temperature into it. So you see coming out of the slow corners that Chadwick, the rear of the car, dances a little bit behind her. That means she can't get the power from the engine through onto the tarmac to go forward. And that's where Visser is able to uh, gain that little bit. But there is a big difference between harrying someone and overtaking someone. And so the difference between first and second may only be two tenths of a second, but it doesn't really matter. If you cross the line first, you still get the maximum number of points. And right now, that's the only thing in Chadwick's mind is to keep Visser behind. The only thing in Visser's mind is to get ahead of Chadwick. And Fabian Velvet's just watching to see what happens at this point. She's going to think if they have a battle, I might be able to slip through. Well, Fabian Volvent's just done the fastest middle sector of anybody on this particular lap. She wants to get into the mix of it as well, because remember, Volvent was on pole position. She was the one that kind of fluffed the start, and uh, this is her opportunity slipping away to take her first victory here. However, I would say she's never started on pole position in a single-seater race, and she's holding on to the battle of these two very experienced drivers in front of her, as in the Formula 3 driver of Jamie Chadwick and Bites Kibitta, who has uh, ties with Formula E and but uh, with BMW she is keeping with them yes and uh, she is keeping with them she's doing a good job but ultimately I don't think that will I would say make her feel any better if she looks back at the replay of this race another driver on new tires is Pepper there in seventh place and she's starting to come back through the field she's only four tenths of a second behind Garcia in six and so therefore Pepper's on a bit of a charge as well Naomi Schiff has just moved her way up to 11th 11th overtaking Esme Hawkey who started with a five place a grid penalty Four and a half minutes left to see if this battle can continue between Jamie Chadwick, Bytesca Visser, and Fabian Volvent, as we're seeing Sabre Cook. Oh, no, we're seeing that's where Naomi Schiff got past uh, Esme Hawkey. She went wide off the circuit and nearly lost uh, another place to Jessica Hawkins, who has a five-second uh, penalty. And uh, just you see a bit of action there. Okay, Jamie, five minutes to go, eyes forward now. Jamie Chabot being told eyes forward. I, yeah, but I that, mean, that, where, where else is she looking? Yeah, it's not a case of where you're looking, it's a case of focus. Focus on what's ahead of you, not Visser behind you. Just clear that out of your mind. If you look in the mirrors, you will automatically drive to that pace and also that position. If you look ahead, you've got the chance to pull away. And you've always got more chance if you look into the future to see where you're going to go, as opposed to look into what's behind you. And that was just a little bit of reassurance and also time information. There's only five minutes to go. And so therefore, you've done the bulk of the work here, Jamie. You got off the line, you're into the first corner first, and you've defended all the way to now. Don't drop it now. Three and a half minutes left around Mazzano. Can Jamie Chadwick hold on? Can she? extend her lead at the top of the championship, or can Bites Gavissa really start to close that gap now, take the win and get more points from Jamie Chadwick here? Yeah, Visser just on the fastest lap of the race and just pulled in another tenth and a half, so she's keeping the pressure on. So as much as Chadwick's looking ahead, Visser is definitely still looking ahead. And they've dropped a little bit from Volven. She is now a second behind Visser in, in third place. 
She's going to run out of time here, though, isn't she? Three minutes left on the clock. Bikes Gavis is going to be really trying to work out. She's done a couple of lunges inside on turn, into turn one, into turn two, and she's looked around a bit at, at the hairpin at 10, but she's going to run out of time and track at this point, isn't she, to be able to get the move done? Well, there's a point where you just have to make a move and you've got to make a big commitment. You can't make a half commitment and sort of sniff your nose down the inside. You've got to either go for it or not at all. And that's the thing that Visser's trying to work out whether she can and where she can do it. Because right now, even though that uh, she is quicker, Chadwick hasn't really made many mistakes. She's areas on the circuit like here, where she's not quite, quite as quick as Visser. But on the other side of it, she hasn't really made many mistakes. So this championship is definitely hotting up now between Jamie Chadwick and Beitzka Visser. Are we going to see this battle continue until the end of the season? I very much think so, as they flash past our commentary box once again, as they two minutes left on this clock. The clock will tick down to zero, and we'll have one lap on top of that. So if it's at zero and they're on a lap, we will have one lap on top of that. So that's probably what Beitzka Visser wants to hear at this point, isn't it? I've got an extra lap to be able to do this. Just a couple of laps to go, and it's Chadwick and Visser fighting for the race victory. Into the final stages here at Misano in Italy. When the clock reaches zero, they'll complete the lap they're on and then have one further lap. Jamie Chadwick and Beitzka Visser are battling for victory. Visser makes a mistake, locks up the left front uh, going into the corner, drops a little bit behind, but not too much. So it is important for the championship, whoever actually ends up winning this particular race. Tricky turn eight. She didn't quite ace there as they come around turn 10 as Naomi Schiff has had uh, I would assume it looks like she's had a spin up by turn four and five. She rejoins the circuit now. Yeah, this is getting to the point where the rear tires are dropping off, trying to get onto the power. She's had a quick spin, but she's on her way again. As uh, here we see her getting up. Yeah, just basically getting onto the power and the left rear tire was still on the curb and uh, did a half spin, caught it. So it wasn't too much damage in terms of uh, time loss, but uh, it's enough because I think she dropped a position there. She so. did. She's now down yeah, in uh, 16th at the moment. Uh, so Naomi Schiff not having the weekend she uh, exactly wanted from this as we watch this battle continue. 22 seconds left on the clock. Plus one lap. Can Beitzka Vista find her way? She's dropped back a bit from Jamie Chadwick now, but we've seen this before. We've seen her drop back, and then the second sector, Jamie Chadwick drops back a bit, and Beitzka Vista closes the gap. And the third sector, we then see, is ever so close into the start finish straight again, and they flash past our commentary box. Yes, it is, but this is the penultimate lap, Claire, so Vista has definitely got to get a move on. She's got to catch right up in Chadwick on this lap if she's going to have any chance of victory, because at the end of this one, one more to go. So from Chadwick's point, of view she's got probably the biggest gap she's had in a long time around here it's six tenths of a second it's not much but it's a bigger breathing space than any uh, i would say from until about lap one so the clock has ticked down but we get one more lap around this Mizano circuit this battle going to continue as we see sabra cook and sarah moore sabra cook seeing if she can make her way around the outside of sarah moore here not sure if she's going to be brave enough to make that one sick and sarah moore defends going into turn eight and this is a battle for eighth place as Moore gets a little bit compromised coming out, but I don't think she's going to open the door and allow Cook up the inside into the deep braking area up at turn 10 before the long straight. But uh, definitely Moore is under a bit of pressure. Cook is now on the charge, but back to the lead battle. Visser hasn't quite caught up on Chadwick as Chadwick goes into the start and finish straight. Uh, to start the final lap as they flash in front of us. So Jamie Chadwick and Beitzka Visser come past our commentary box. It's the final lap now. We'll see Jamie Chadwick extend her lead at the championship if Beitzka Visser can't find a way around this 16-turn circuit. Can she do it? Can she take the lead of the championship? Are we going to see another swing in this championship? She's pulled back a little bit now. Fabian Volven not involved in this battle as it stands anymore. However, she's going to be very happy with the first ever podium in the W Series and really show that she's a, a contender in this championship, but it's Chadwick who is on the final lap. Chadwick who's leading. Chadwick who had the brilliant start off the line to take the lead. Beitzka Visser 
will have to slot into second if she can't find a way. Yeah, I think uh, at this moment in time, Chadwick has definitely got uh, a reasonable control of this final lap of the race. However, Visser is going to have to throw everything at it. She's only got really one more corner where she's quicker than Chadwick, and then it's down into the hairpin. So if she is going to make it, it's at the end of this long straight with the triple kink right-hander. But she looks to be a little bit too far behind. Chadwick's, I would say, going to control the end of this lap and the end of this race to take another victory. They make their way down to turn 12. A couple more corners of this circuit to go, and Jamie Chadwick can extend her lead in this championship. Here they go into the final corner of 14, up to 15, and then up to 16. And let's see if we can see the checkered flag out already. Is Jamie Chadwick going to get this win? I think she is. She's had to work for it, but she becomes the first double winner of the W Series. She extends her lead at the top of the championship, and she has Beitzke Visser not far behind. Fabian Volven gets the first podium of her W Series career, as we see Mickey Koi Yama just out of the podium positions there, but she's made her way up to sixth. Vicky Piria, the home favorite, will be happy with fifth. Probably not exactly where she wanted. I'm sure she wanted to be on the podium, but she'll be happy with a fifth place. Sixth is uh, Garcia and Tasman Pepper is seventh as the cars start to tumble through. Let's have a look at how the race ended then. Jamie Chadwick takes the win. Beitzka Visser closes the gap a little bit to her championship rival in second place after that battle. Fabian Volven started in pole position, starts third. Then you've got Miki Koyama, Piria Garcia, Pepper, and Sabra Cook, and then Sarah Moore and Vivian Kessley, the last of the points. Esme Hawkey after her five-place grid penalty finishes 11th, and it's Bovi, Redest, Wood, Hawkins, Holbrook, Gilks, and Naomi Schiff rounding up the 18 drivers that finished. Alice Powell did not finish after coming together with Fabian Volvend. Jamie Chadwick, your family are here to see this one as well, but my goodness, it wasn't easy. Bytesky Visser was putting pressure on you straight after that safety car restart. Yeah, exactly. It felt like a long race for me. And yeah, I just didn't want to make any mistakes. In the previous races, I've always made like one or two mistakes. So I wanted to be really disciplined, not make any mistakes. I managed to do that, but she really did keep me honest. So um, yeah, right the way to the finish, I was sort of between my legs trying to make sure I wasn't going to screw this one up and yeah thank god with my family here and uh, my engineer Sam I'm really happy to have got the win. So how does that leave the standings? Well Jamie Chadwick is leading with 68 points she extends the lead in the championship by Skavissa in second place Marta Garcia remains in third with 35 points only a couple of points behind those Alice Powell what could she have done had she finished the race Fabian Volven moves up to fifth place Mickey Koyama in sixth with 22 Sarah Moore with 22 points as well that little battle interesting there 18 points Tasman Pepper Vicky Piria uh, rounding up the top nine there Fabian Volven there gets her third place trophy from Catherine Bonmier, the CEO of W Series. And gives Beitzke Visser a nice high five there for her second place. Catherine Bonmier again gives the trophy to Beitzke Visser, holds it above, thumbs up. And here's our winner, the championship leader, Jamie Chadwick. Says well done to Fabian Volven. High fives as well to Beitzke Visser and a big hug from Catherine Bond-Muir. Let's hear from some of our drivers now, starting with the top US driver, Sabra Cook, who finished eighth. She's been speaking with Lee McKenzie. Well, Sabra, we spoke beforehand about how much you wanted to have a positive race just to flick that switch for going forward. Did you get it? I got it. You know, I'm, I'm super happy to have scored points today and um, just really want to take this momentum into the next races into the end of the season. But I'm, I'm, I'm feeling great. You know, scoring P8 today feels like a podium for me. So I'm really happy with my progress and um, really thank W Series for, for letting me have this opportunity. What do you think the big difference was then? Um, I don't think it was any big difference. I think it was, a, I knew kind of the right preparation that I needed to do. And I think it was just, you know, keeping at it and continue to work hard and just put it together and just get myself in the right mental frame of mind. So I think all those things just continuing, continuing, you know, eventually you break through. And I think that's kind of what happened for me today and getting a good start, I think really helped as well. And my dad's here this weekend, so maybe that's my lucky charm. Now he has to come to every race, but um, yeah, it was, it's been a, it, it was tough. It started out tough, but I'm really happy to, to end up where I did. I'm delighted for you. Well done. Thank you very much. Alice, a really unfortunate end to your race here in Misano. It was a huge crash. The first thing we need to find out, are you OK? Yeah, no, I'm fine. My heels hit the uh, tub quite hard when I landed, but no, my back's OK. My, my heels are fine. There's no issues. So, yeah, all good. 
apart from the car. Yeah, the unfortunate thing, I've got to keep that car for, for Norris Ring. I haven't really been getting on with, with, the, with the car too much. Uh, Norris Ring's quite fast, I believe, um, and I've heard it's quite bumpy, so, you know. I was looking forward to swapping back to another car, but unfortunately now, because I've been in an incident, I've got to keep that. So, um, yeah, hopefully, you know, high tech would do a fantastic job. Well, Fabian, it's a tricky one, because when you start from pole, I'm sure you want to finish at the front as well. But there was a lot going on in that race. I hit at the start. You were able to keep going, and you must just be relieved to get a trophy and some champagne. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I started on pole. Of course, you, you want to finish on pole as well. Um, but yeah, I got a hit from Ellis on the start. She really just hit my uh, front tire, and I was really hoping that my car is still in one piece. But yeah, I kept going flat out and brought some trophies home, which was my goal for this weekend. And so I couldn't be happier. Yeah, and you could see the pressure that you were trying to put on Bytska Vesta. It's not easy to follow in these cars either, is it? Yeah, it was really tricky to follow them because as soon as you were really close and like able to do a move, you got so much understeer. And yeah, and then with the heat, the tires were struggling in the end with oversteering. So yeah, it was not easy to, to do some surprise moves. So where do we go next? Well, we go to Norris Room. We go back to Germany. So make sure you join us then.